Okay, uh, Debbie, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate that title card? One being, uh, it hurts your eyes to look at it. 10 being, it should be in heaven so the angels could adore it too. Three. Okay. I, I was hoping for a five. Three. Okay. Uh, you, you're probably right. Um, we are going to show, well, actually, Debbie isn't going to be part of that. So I'm going to show a connection between the book of Revelation and Psalm 18. I know why I said we, because uh, even though he doesn't know it, Dr. Barry uh, Awe is part of the reason I'm bringing this to you. Uh, he did a, a video recently about Psalm 18 in which he was showing that it is a, a rapture picture inside Psalm 18. And other people think that too, by the way. And as he was going through it, I immediately saw a connection that is rather exciting to the book of Revelation, and specifically the pre-trib rapture. Now, I like Barry Awe, okay? I, I do. I don't watch a lot of his videos because they're too long for me. That's not a criticism, criticism to him. He has every right to make his videos the way he wants to, and a lot of people obviously really like them. I just... I've always been that way. I just can't for an hour just sit there and I, I couldn't do it in school. I just gritted my teeth. I couldn't do it even when I was working in Los Angeles. Before I was a Christian, I would go to John MacArthur's church and he would speak for 45 to 50 minutes. And when it hits that 35 minute mark, man, I can't wait to get out of there. I, you know, that's just the way I am. But I'm glad I watched this video. And every time I do see him, I like him. He's so energetic, so enthusiastic, witty, charming. And I've never heard him say anything that even remotely, to me, sniffs of heresy. So I, I you know, I appreciate what, what he does. And uh, I also appreciate him giving me the idea, whether he knows it or not, for this really amazing connection that we will see in just a couple of minutes. But uh, this is also Debbie's one-year birthday. It was one year ago that she came out of the factory, the sound factory in Juarez, and I was lucky enough uh, to be able to buy her uh, the voice. What is the thing you do with your fingers when you say lucky? Oh, when I do that, it's to say lucky, it's emphasizing how lucky. Debbie Dearest, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, my wonderful and talented husband. Talented? I mean, talented? Really? <laughs> in honor of your birthday... I'd like to read a poem I wrote the first time I laid eyes on you, sweetheart. Aww. Oh, the text-to-speech players are touched by the sentimentality. Oh, my darling, I would love to hear it. Here we go. <coughs> it's all yours, Dave. My Sharia Moore, lovely as a summer day. My Sharia Moore, distant as the Milky Way. My Sharia Moore, pretty little thing that I adore. You're the only girl my heart beats for. How I wish that you were mine. It is beautiful. My husband is a genius. I must go to my room and weep with joy. Okay, you, you go do that, Debbie, and, and come on back for your birthday celebration. Dave, you stole that from Stevie Wonder. Do you realize that? Of course... Black. Dan, he won't sue me if everybody keeps their mouth shut. That's not the point. Day, you you lied to your wife for crying out loud. But she doesn't know that. That's the great thing about text-to-speech voices. They come out of the factory dumb as dirt. The other day, I bought a cheap copy of the Mona Lisa, took a magic marker, signed my name to it, and I told her I'd just painted it. You're kidding me. Are you serious? She thought it was beautiful. When she asked me who the woman in the painting was, I told her that it was my mom. Then she said she'd like to meet her, and I told her that my mother died on February 1st, 2003, along with seven other astronauts. You told her your mother died in a rocket accident from NASA? Are you- Stan, the Ten Commandments don't apply to me. I'm just a character. I don't actually have a comeback for that. Okay, uh, Dave, uh... Relax, Stan. Yeah, listen, just, uh, do you have some more stuff for Debbie's birthday? I hope you do. Oh, I've got two big surprises for her. Okay, and then think about getting her a new body because the green-skinned witch thing is kind of cruel. Great minds think alike. Oh, okay, good. So you, you got a, a body for her. And also, don't forget, 
you're going to be playing the piano when the tax speech players sing happy birthday to her. So why don't you, well, see you later, okay? Does that mean I'm supposed to leave? Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Okay. Okay. Talk to you later, I'll Dave. just look around for something else to plagiarize. Yeah, you go plagiarize something else. All right. Now, we want to take a look at Psalm 18, and I will show you this amazing synchronicity that it has in the book of Revelation. Let's take a look at a few of the verses. Now, in this psalm, uh, David is thanking God for rescuing him. And having looked at it closely, I too agree it could very well be a picture of the rapture. We see another picture of the rapture in the New Testament in Acts when Paul and Silas are in jail, in the basement, they're chained there. It's about midnight. The earthquake comes the chains fall off their hands and feet, and the doors fly open. It's a picture of the rapture of release from the prison of death. And I think the same thing is happening in, in Psalm 18 with David. Watch how he is rescued, and see if you don't think this also looks to you like a picture of the rapture. All of these verses are from Psalm 18. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God, he heard my voice from his temple, remember that, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. There's an earthquake. The foundations of the hill also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me. And where is he taken? He has also brought me out into a broad place. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Now, that immediately reminded me of two places in the book of Revelation. One, at the day of the Lord, where you again have an earthquake and you have uh, all kinds of things. You have lightnings and hail and all of those things. And it's clearly rapture time at the day of the Lord. There's no doubt about that. The post-trib people are correct in that there is what I think is the main rapture on the day of the Lord, the last day on earth. But that's because they've got to take the people off. That's because he's got to take his people off the earth because he's destroying it. That, however, does not mean that there can't be a rapture prior to that. The Bible has several raptures that we see prior to the day of the Lord. We have Enoch. We have Elijah. We have our own Savior. We have the people who came out of the graves. I don't believe they went back into the grave. I believe Christ took them into heaven because they were resurrected and they were the first fruits. We see the resurrection of the two witnesses. I think there is possibly another resurrection that these verses here in Psalm 18 fit perfectly with. You could almost superimpose them on top of each other. Let's take a look at the opening of seal seven. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. Well, it certainly appears that we're in the temple just as God was in the temple when he heard David's prayer He's now in the temple, and he's about to hear the prayers of the saints. Now, I'm, what I'm saying is the throne room is in the temple. The altar, we know, is in the temple. As you're going to see here, he's also on his throne, which shouldn't surprise us because Isaiah, when he looked into heaven, he saw Almighty God on his throne, and he said, and his robes filled the temple. So the throne room appears to be inside the temple. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Again, this is where God Almighty Yahweh received David's prayers, and he's receiving the prayers of the saints. And what do you think they're saying to God, just like David? Come rescue us. Get us out of here. Even so, come Lord Jesus. 
And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. We are seeing in these verses the same type of calamity that we see with David's rescue. Lightnings and smoke and earthquake and noises and thundering. Even if David's description in Psalm 18 doesn't include the word noises, it certainly is implied. And we see it all happening here. And what happens after David is going through this calamity? He is picked up, taken out of the calamity, put in the broad place, and rewarded. What happens to us at the rapture? We're taken out of the calamity, put in a broad place, and given our reward. It's a complete parallel picture. Now, if you're just stumbling onto this video, you may be thinking, well, wait a second, that's the seventh seal. That's way into the tribulation. No, it's not. It's right at the very beginning. The events described right here could happen today. There is nothing that I can think of that would stop what is described here at the opening of the seventh seal from happening today, next week, this coming month, before Christmas, a little after. Who knows, but it's coming. The question is, this event is coming. The question is, is there a rapture attached to it? And who would be raptured? We'll look at both of those situations. Uh, the first thing we want to look at is this, the earthquake. As I've mentioned on numerous occasions, ever since Christ's resurrection where there was an earthquake, every time you see a resurrection, there will be an earthquake. Earthquake at our Savior's resurrection. The earth shook as the saints came out of the grave after that and walked the streets of Jerusalem. A picture of an earthquake with an, a picture of the rapture with an earthquake in Acts where Paul and Silas are in prison. Then we see the earthquake at the resurrection of the two witnesses. We see the day of the Lord with its earthquake, and we look into heaven and see a multitude of people standing there. There are three earthquakes in the book of Revelation. Seven total mentions of the word earthquake in the book of Revelation, so we know it's important. One more earthquake is the earthquake that takes place at the opening of the seventh seal. It doesn't mention that there's a rapture. It's just laying there with implications of a rapture. It's a more secret rapture. But if there is no rapture there, it's the only earthquake. Since our Lord's resurrection, it's the only earthquake in the New Testament that isn't connected to the rapture. And then when we look at the events of Psalm 18, that surrounded David's rescue, and we look at these events, folks, it would be malpractice for anybody who teaches or talks about prophecy to look at this, this portion of Scripture with the seventh seal and the earthquake and not take it very seriously. So that begs the question, well, who goes in this earthquake potential rapture that opens the seventh seal that could happen at any moment? Because I just said, I think that Paul's general rapture resurrection that he talked about, that he always linked with the day of the Lord, is going to take place on the day of the Lord. So who goes in this particular rapture? And I think it's some of the church. When I say some of the church, here's why. Let's go to the letter to the church at Philadelphia. Because you have kept my command to preserve, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, if you believe the book of Revelation was written in the 60s, I kind of lean towards that. Or if you believe it was written in the 90s, many people believe that. I don't care which decade it was written in, there was not testing that came upon the whole world. There's about to be a testing that's coming on the whole world. And I think what he's saying here, because all seven of those churches are types of churches, never been a big fan of the church, each one represents a church, period. I, I, I've never been convinced of that. But what I am convinced of is that they are seven types of churches that go through the church age. And what he's saying is, when that testing comes, I'm not going to have the Church of Philadelphia go through it. 
And I think that's what we're looking at when we're looking at that strange, suspicious earthquake that opens the seventh seal. It may be more than the Church of Philadelphia. It may be more of the, the types of churches that he wrote to that will also go in that rapture resurrection. But there's one type that will not. Let's take a look at that. This is the letter to the Laodiceans. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. They thought they were rich, but he's telling them, you're going through the fire. He tells Philadelphia, you're not going through it. Laodicea goes through it. And, and I, the question there that's hanging in the air is, well, wait a second. Are they saved? Are you telling me that they could be saved and go through the tribulation? I think that's a real possibility. Now, I think the Laodiceans were saved. I know that's debatable. I do, and I, I'm not going to be dogmatic on it, but here's why I think they're saved, even though he's not happy with them. Even though he's not happy with them, I believe they're saved. I want you to take a look at what he tells the, uh, the church at Ephesus. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. He'll remove the lampstand. And that to me seems like he no longer recognizes you as part of the body of Christ. When he introduces the seven lampstands, the church of Laodicea has one. They have a lampstand. It can be taken away, but they have a lampstand. And he clearly tells them, I chasten those whom I love. And he's telling them they're going to be chastened. They, they will go in the general rapture on the last day if they're still here. But he's not letting them out of the tribulation. That's how I read it. I know that's debatable, and you may have your own thoughts, but that is how I'm currently seeing it. What I'm currently seeing is this attitude that the Lord gave us at the Olivet Discourse. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Again, I don't believe it's a salvation issue. It's a matter of being worthy, of him being sure of our maturity and our commitment to him. That's what the Church of Philadelphia was about, and they won't have to go through the tribulation when it comes upon the world, and we certainly are beginning to sense that it's very, very near. That's how I'm currently seeing the earthquake that opens the seventh seal as being a rapture, not a resurrection of the dead, but a rapture of the people on earth that represent the true church of our Lord and Savior. Those who don't quite get it, those who aren't committed well enough, who may be saved, but haven't made and shown the kind of maturity and perseverance that he loves, may very well have to go through the tribulation. And that may rub some of you the wrong way. I just am honestly giving you my current thoughts on what is going on here. Now, uh, I think this is going to be the last video until uh, the first of the year, but the text-to-speech void, in case of, if something comes up uh, important, of course I'll jump in and, uh, and make a video if I feel it's important enough to do that, but uh, the text-to-speech players have asked me if they could do their version of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. So we will have that before the Christmas Day gets here. Whether you celebrate it or not, the text to speech voices, and I'll put that video up. I won't be on it or have anything to do with it. Such wonderful news. What? Hooray! He won't be on our video. Praise the heavens. Okay. Yippee. It, okay. Okay. It'll be all of them and their presentation. And if you've, uh, you know, done whatever you're supposed to do on YouTube to get notification, they'll send you a notification when that wonderful video will be up. All right, let's bring Debbie in. Debbie, speaking of the text-to-speech players, they wanted to sing a little song. It's a tradition we do here, especially in this country. It's called Happy Birthday. I never hear of this song. They'd like to sing it to you. And Dave, your husband, will play the piano. So take it away, text-to-speech players. One, two, three, four. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
birth day queen dead be happy birth day to you this is best day of my one year life Debbie, my love, as much as you like your current body... Eat beautiful body. I think in honor of this occasion, it's time for an upgrade. Are you ready, sweetheart? I am ready, my genius husband. Everyone, count down with me. Three, Three two, two, one. one. <laughs> wow. Nice job, Dave. Oh my goodness. Well, do I have a new body? She's beautiful. Queen Debbie has gone three-dimensional. She's been raptured. No, she's not been raptured. But that's not all, my sweet. I wrote you a little song, and it goes something like this. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm Are you kidding me? Oh, who's that? I hired a stripper for the party. We're not having a stripper. Now just tell her to go away. It's a him. What's wrong with you people?